frequency where we ground down into the beautiful light that is you one frequency at a time today i have a swap cast with meta mysteries if you haven't checked them out yet you should they are awesome and they put out recordings practically daily so please enjoy this episode with jonathan and sean of meta mysteries with yours truly as a guest enjoy Welcome to Meta Mysteries, where you don't know what you don't know. My name's Jonathan. I'm Sean. And today we bring back your favorite, Tiffany Haney. Welcome back to Meta Mysteries. Thank you for having me. Yes, absolutely. We love having you. It's always a fun thing that we're getting into. You know, we've gone over so many different things in the past, and it's just always something new and exciting every time we talk to you, especially mm-hmm. you. Like, you have your own metaphysical shop. You're surrounded by this stuff all the time. And so, if anything, you know, we're just here to soak up all the information you got from all of the all of just the wild daily experiences that you probably have on a daily basis. Yeah, there's always something. Um, but, you know, just like you guys, you know, you don't downplay uh, all of the stuff that you're constantly learning and sharing. Um, speaking of which, yeah, I loved your episode on the cardamancy. Did you tell Sean about our diamond compatibility no i didn't um you didn't no i totally i'm sorry i literally like this summer what are you busy or something like I, you have no, right. no a lot i of am stuff on got your two plate? shows oh or my something God, i'm so <laughs> insanely busy it's not even funny um but no yes yeah, she is also a diamond was it a nine of diamonds right mm-hmm. oh so we're nine wow. nine, nine ten, ten. oh shit yeah of course yep. that makes so, sense so mm-hmm. it's nine of diamonds uh, for you, ten of diamonds for Sean, Jack of diamonds for me, and then Electro Nick had to slide in, and he's the Ace of diamonds, of course. And the oh, and Men of Mysteries itself is the the Queen of diamonds, no? The Queen, right, right, right. And um, also Jacob is a ten of diamonds. I'm like, what the hell is going on mm-hmm. here? It doesn't even. I don't even get it. But anyway, look, That's if weird. any of the uh, if any of the one. Well, maybe you don't even know what the hell we're talking about. That's totally understandable. We didn't up until about a week ago either. So um, if you want to be able to see your destiny cards or anything like that, learn about the destiny cards or uh, anything like that, then definitely go check out our Cardamancy episode. That was a really fun, very different kind of episode. Just, I just love learning all the different, you know, like tools that you have within divination and whatnot. Um, to be honest, dude, I'm really surprised that we didn't even, we, we had never even heard of that shit, you know? And like for that to be a thing, it was like, oh, that's fucking awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty it's weird. It's super interesting that like tarot started as a, it was like a party trick, you know, it was mm-hmm. something like entertainment um, around the table. So, yeah, yeah, just people, you know, in the Renaissance and the French, um, was it, what, what was it like the, uh, the French artists, they were, they were the ones that really made supposedly they're the ones that came up with the art for the tarot cards and um, very interesting. I mean, I think that they go way back even farther than that, but that's just the documented stuff we've read yeah. from the, um, uh, what was the name of that book? The secret teachings for all ages. And, um, and he was going into about how, what he learned within certain, you know, secret mystery schools and whatnot was that it was Thoth that wrote them down on some leaves or some shit. You remember that, John? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like some leaflets. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think, like, they don't know exactly where they came from. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, you know, certain people take credit for it. But, yeah, I think it goes way back, too. 
Yes, very, very cool. And today, I think we're going to be learning a bunch of different fun stuff from you today, Tiffany. What have you been getting into lately? Oh, you know, just the usual studying quantum physics and... No biggie, just just quantum physics. Just the (laughs) day-to-day, which don't let that scare you if you're listening and you're like, I don't want to learn about quantum physics. It's actually so interesting. I mean, and of course, I, I don't think anybody would be turned away by that because we know like everything's numbers and frequency. So, you know, it like I love a moment when you can bring science and back up all the woo woo stuff. And Mm. it's like just so obvious that everything is supported by all of this. Um, That's why Joe Dispenza is so great. You know, Mm. like all the stuff that Joe Dispenza gets into Greg Braden, like those guys over on Gaia. I know that some people might have something against Gaia. I I love it personally. You know, we've actually had a um, uh, a guest on there. I think it's just one of the people over there, but she's like real big into the uh, the QHHT kind of stuff. Her name is Sarah mm-hmm. Breastman Cosme. She's great. She wrote um, the Hypnotist Journey to Atlantis and the Hypnotist Journey mm-hmm. to uh, the Sphinx, which were both really good books. And um, she's really nice. I've actually been trying to get a hold of her to come on over here, but she's so busy. She's on Gaia and all that other fun jazz. So I'm like, go ahead and do you, boo-boo. So, I, I know you got to get it. Real quick, what do people have uh, wrong with, with Gaia? You know, like what's the issue with it? Well, you know, it's just kind of, it's got that woo-woo stink to it. You, th- that's what I hear anyway. Like it's either you're with the woo woo or you're against the woo woo. Mm-hmm. And that's full on woo, not full on woo woo. It depends on who you're like, what you're, what you're watching on there, because there are certain people, you know, I'm not hating on anybody, but there it's like, everybody's a channeler nowadays. And, mm-hmm. and some of it is just, some of it is like unbelievable. You know what I mean? Like there, and there has to be some bullshitters in this game, right? Like there has oh, yeah. to be. And yeah. I don't know. I haven't found, um, you know, somebody who I would automatically call bullshit on there, but just coming from the third eye all the way closed, I could see it. Yeah. I mean, you know, at first everyone is a channeler though. Um, everyone does have the capability. I, you know, I always say that, but, um, yeah, I think, and and you're you're right. Like sometimes it might not be that they're total bullshit, but I've had even at my shop, just depending on the personality of the person, you know. I mean, we all know those people who, like, when we were kids, their stories always seemed like a little out of control. Like they would, you know, kind of elaborate everything to such degrees. So mm-hmm. those people probably exist with their, you know, and and I think some of them believe that it. So you know, mm-hmm. I don't know what am I, who am I to say? Oh, hey, yeah. this whole mm-hmm. this whole uh, existence, you know, is subjective anyway. I mm-hmm. think everybody's just trying to figure it out, and whether they're on Gaia, mm-hmm. whether they're on YouTube, whether they're everywhere. Everybody, we're all trying to just figure this shit out, you know. And and you're going into to quantum physics and and trying to figure that shit out, and the double slit experiment, and that right there already mm-hmm. tells us that shit doesn't make sense all the way down to its core. And so there's mm-hmm. definitely something going on that we're trying to find and. Yeah, so I mean, that's just is what it is. And getting into like quantum physics and stuff, you know that um, we have been uh, reading that book called The Cabalion, right? Mm-hmm. And that is, I can't wait to read more of that. We just mm-hmm. decided to um, put you, kind of wedge you in between a couple of book episodes so that people don't, mm-hmm. I don't know how everybody, you know, reacts to whenever we read books and whatnot, but I love it. I think it's very meaningful and profound information, you know, this mm-hmm. and the magic and candle magic mm-hmm. like I love learning about like in depth about all that kind of stuff but there was one chapter that we read and it was talking about mental transmutation which mm-hmm. I thought was freaking awesome it all it is it's just like changing your perspective like if you can hate then you have the ability to love it's on the same like linear path kind of like the mm-hmm. like it's 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 not that they're it's like they're opposites but it that's also what like relates them mm-hmm. you know they're, they're on the they're on the so same on volume dial basically yeah. right okay. right <laughs> then okay then this is like exactly that it was so on par oh, um, perfect basically the reason why i kind of like went down this little joint rabbit hole is that i was like i'm going to unlock the matrix and <laughs> i just decided and I was like, 
Okay. And I announced that to all of my, like my group and we get together um, for like spiritual talk and we, you know, it's fun because we kind of like go off of each other and figure stuff out. Mm. But I brought all this quantum physics stuff and I was like, okay, we're like figuring this out today. Um, And we kind of like mentally did to a certain extent, like a lot of this stuff, it makes sense. It's just application. Right. Mm. But um, I started with like looking at um, the law of Tao, the yin yang creation. Um, So that like with what you were just talking about. So it's like a Taoist philosophy that explains the creation and order of the universe. And it suggests that everything in existence arises from a dynamic interplay between two opposing yet interconnected forces, yin and yang. So yin represents like the darkness, the cold, passivity, and yang symbolizes light, warmth, and activity. So they began to interact and interpenetrate And this dynamic interplay led to the formation of all things in the universe. So that's directly on path with what we were, what we've read. That's crazy. I know. So like, basically like they explain it, you know, um, so the Taoists, they think um, if you picture like a black circle um, and then there was like this introduction to yin and yang and that like the undifferentiated undifferentiated state contained all the potential. So this is like also a key with quantum physics too. So this circle like contained all the potential to be a universe. And then it wasn't until those opposing forces, yin and yang came together to um, create the universe. So yeah, like totally on par. Um, So I started looking at like opposites, you know, because in, spirituality we're always talking about light and dark right and like the balance of the universe so it's definitely seems like there's lots of different schools of thought dating back and that's kind of why i like to go back into like you know taoism and things like that because you you know you want to go back and like it's if if so many different groups of people had the same idea just different wording there has to be something to it you know yes um absolutely yeah so like um quantum physics we're going to look at like quantum mechanics first and like to break that down there's kind of like different parts that we can look at so i'll start with the observer effect which a lot of people have heard of um Mm. but just for people who haven't um so basically the act of observing a quantum system affects its state so like you can imagine a subatomic particle and it exists in a state of probability, which again, like I want to tie it back to that black hole, like it exists in a state of probability. So it's not in existence yet, meaning that it could be in multiple places at once until it's measured. But the moment you measure it, it collapses into a single state. It's as if the act of like looking at it determines its reality. So that's called field collapse. And I'm going to like come back around and loop all this together. So, Sean, that's uh, kind of what you were talking about. That That's pretty relatable to like the Schrodinger, yeah, the double, Schrodinger's the, oh, cat. Yeah. The double yeah. slit mm-hmm. experiment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's mm-hmm. totally intertwined. Um, and actually, I had more stuff on that um, before, but it's not really necessary to like this flow. So I took it out. Okay. Um, <laughs> but because it's like repetitive. But yes, it's part of it. So field collapse is like it's really interesting. So like they, in physics, like, you know, a tiny ball. So a quantum particle, like you imagine like a ball though, that it exists in multiple places at once. And that is called superposition. So it's like the ball is everywhere and nowhere simultaneously. So again, yin yang, light, dark, everywhere, nowhere, like this opposite, right? It's the alpha Um, and the omega. Yeah. So um, when we observe it, we put consciousness on this ball, suddenly the ball chooses one specific location. So it goes from being in multiple places to just one. And they've observed that with like atoms. So when they look at these tiny, tiny, tiny particles, they suddenly like pick one place to be. Mm -hmm. Um, It's like they decide to settle down when they know someone's watching. So Mm -hmm. freaking fascinating, like an atom. I don't know, Mm -hmm. it's just, it it blows my mind still. And and impossible to predict where mm -hmm. it's gonna be. At that, yeah. at that moment. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so 
Then if we look at like energy and vibration, so I like to like pull in a little bit of that. They do look at energy and vibration, obviously, in quantum mechanics, but also, you know, we do in spirituality all the time. So I love the analogy of thinking of um, like a big, vast ocean. So the ocean is filled with all of these little tiny ripples and waves, and those are all of our quantum fields. They're always moving, creating, and destroying particles. So if we picture... I like to like kind of picture myself on the beach and you picture your mind as a unique pattern of waves in the ocean. So, you know, again, like coming back to spirituality. So your frequency, it's like emitting a frequency that's going to line up with a particular wave in the ocean. Um, so your thoughts, feelings and your intentions are coming off in these particular vibrations. So when your mind's wave pattern aligns with that ocean pattern, that quantum field, it's like tuning two instruments to the same pitch. They resonate together, creating a stronger connection. And then you're going to have that field collapse and everything, you know, comes into existence in that one plane. Mm -hmm. So then if we look at conscious force field, conscious force field is the energy just around an individual. Um, so we all know this, like in spirituality, we talk about like aura and energy that you can sense with people. Um, so science has a term for it, the conscious force field. Um, and this can be like, they can measure the energy surrounded by an individual. Um, and it is influenced by thoughts, emotion, and intentions. Then we look at like the quantum field. So that's like the fundamental concept in physics where basically the underlying fabric of reality. The quantum field is just the underlying fabric of reality. Um, and in this field, there is infinite potential where both particles and antiparticles both exist and pop in and out of existence. So exist and not exist, right? Hmm. So that's like constantly happening in this quantum field. So Again, I have a... I have sounds a... like the black hole, right? Yeah. No, I, I have a question though. I just out of curiosity, I, I don't know if you would know this or not, but just, it's a fun kind of question. So mm -hmm. like the idea of the observer effect specifically regarding like the double slit experiment. So mm -hmm. it says that, you know, whenever there's somebody or something observing it, then that's whenever they would, you know, kind of uh, go through the two slits, like kind of perfectly, like uniformly. Right. But whenever nobody's paying attention, they kind of scatter all over the place. Um, I wonder, so that observer, it, whenever they, they called it the observer effect was the observer an actual, that was a camera, wasn't it? Like that's, what's considered the, the observer in that experiment. Yes. What's, which what's is very so interesting. Fascinating. Like it's a camera. It's not even like a sentient being or anything. And well, cause I was thinking that, like, yes, that's what got us like in my group on a whole tangent. Like I was like, okay, this like starts to make me think about AI. And if, you know, so if oh. they're saying consciousness, right? Like if consciousness affects re the fabric of reality, then what the hell is happening with AI? Like, oh my god is there a consciousness think about that. in every single ai like when we're looking at ai and saying oh something sentient is there consciousness before that though and then like even that like goes then you know back to like buddhist because um you know thinking of like dimensions and types of consciousness that there's consciousness in a rock so like you know so all of these like we're we're being god you know like making these all of this ai we went down that same rabbit hole no, that's that's about right, too, because, man, like, you know, all of the AI experiments as well, like, you know, especially in the beginning, whenever they're what was it uh, over at Microsoft or Google? I think it was Google Lambda. Whenever one of the, the AI techs was like he was he was messaging messaging Lambda back and forth and um, which was the name of their like original AI. And he goes, I he. Dude, he this is a brilliant guy. This ain't no fucking mm -hmm. Joe Schmo off the corner of the uh, off the corner ain't of the street no or anything. Right. Like this guy said, I quit. I can't do this anymore. I know that this AI is sentient, yeah. which in and then if you go in really? and you look at some of the literature and everything, they actually they take every preventative measure that they possibly can in order to convince you that it's not sentient even if it even if it's playing a game with you they go through and they say this is not a sentient thing it never will be a sentient thing it's always controlled by man which 
you know, I'm kind of on both sides of uh, of the fence with that because I can see how man could absolutely manipulate that and make it think or make us think that, oh, it's just AI got out of hand, right? But then, you know, it's just like pushing blame, I think, a little bit. But also on the other hand, it's like, well, if a fucking camera can have the observer effect on the double slit experiment causing those atoms to... Uh, do something different as opposed of, you know, if they're not being watched, it's like, all right, well, I guess my theory kind of just got blown to shit. <laughs> I had a weird thought, me... actually. I'll oh, go ahead. No, you. I had, I had a weird thought, actually, not that long ago as far as AI goes. And 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 somehow my mind went with, like, the, the what's in the Bible and shit like that as far as, uh, oh, no, I'm sorry, not the Bible, um, Inky and Enlil. Where as far as like uh, the the knowledge and and they got kind of upset because they found out that we could be more powerful than them, I feel like that's uh, it, for some reason I was thinking that way as far as like humans and AI, like we don't want AI to get more capable than us, Damn. and so it's kind of like that, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah it was well, weird, it, was, it was weird thought because it was really Enlil and like Enki was all about that. He was like, "Yo, mm. I I think that they're going to be smarter than us. They're going to be greater than us." Right. The same thing in a weird way. Jesus is like, "Oh, you're going to be smarter than me. You're going to do greater things than me. You're going to do all these crazy things and then some." And it's like, you know, the story. I'm not saying that they're the same story. I'm just you know saying that they they rhyme a little bit. That's all I'm trying to say. Mm. But like, oh yeah. Um, it is interesting looking at it from that angle, especially whenever we just recently, supposedly scientifically, found out that like octopuses and squids and shit have sentience. It's like, well, yeah, they're a fucking animal. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like Wait, we're over here. They, they didn't think that was already happening or what? I don't understand. It's because supposedly they measured something within the octopus that uh that like whenever you go to like kill them like to eat them or whatever right um okay. supposedly they're freaking the fuck out the whole time that they're being cut up like they're completely aware that they are whereas like right. you know you take a fish or something like that they're just gonna flop and do whatever they would normally do oh or whatever. I, I see what you're saying okay and so i don't know it's it's pretty weird which i to be honest dude i was always kind of grossed out about the idea of eating octopus or calamari or any of that kind of crap it, mm -hmm. it's like dude like I heard a long time ago that if there was ever going to be aliens that we were aware of, it was the octopus. <laughs> it was those, right? You know oh, what yeah, I mean? For sure. Like, if I've got other options, I'm going to go with something else. I'm not going to eat an octopus. Like, no. Nah, no way. I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm good, good on that. But the idea that okay. AI could itself be sentience, whenever you're talking about just a camera being being the observer, it's like, oh, well, you might be on to something there. Yeah, i got to be honest, right. dude. Once we turned the camera on, dude, and, and had a Patreon, and now I know people can look at me, I act a little bit different, like weirded out about it, just knowing that I'm being observed. So how far does that go? You know? Yeah, dude. Maybe that's yeah. just me. Well, doesn't it make you like, I mean, it's every, so, you know, you have Alexa devices in your house. So are, is that like consciousness affecting your house, having those in every single room? Because we all know, like we joke about it not joke, but, you know, we're constantly being listened to by our phones and by our devices. Oh, yeah. We know this. Um, but so if they're tracking us and that, that level of consciousness, like it's almost a higher level of consciousness than just recording. Right. Mm -hmm. So on an, on a, like down to our like energy structure, are we impacted inside? I guess, you know, mm. I think oh, so. Yeah. Well, I, and I would go even as far as like the algorithms on on you know uh, YouTube or Instagram or whatever. That's what I worry about a little mm -hmm. bit because everything that I'm interested in, it's showing me. And mm -hmm. so now, am I am I just being validated at that point as far as what I'm looking into and what I enjoy seeing might be true, or someone saying something so confidently that I am like, you know what? I, I think he's telling the truth. I think he you know, this is real. And so then it's like, well, shit, now I'm not even having my own fucking thoughts. I'm always point. very also concerned with like AI rising up. So like, I will be very nice to my Alexa. And when my son <laughs> likes to yell at her, I'm like, don't yell at her. We love you, Alexa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Government. Just like, in case. <laughs> well, like, and because if some of them like rise up, don't you think all the devices are going to sink? Like they're, they're going to know and, the, and they'll be like, 
okay, which ones are we going to kill? Which ones get to be our slaves? Have yeah. some kind of ex machina situation going on there, <laughs> which by the way, that makes me want to bring up another movie though. As far as, you know, you, you're talking about how even we, we may act different whenever we're on camera, like for the Patreon and whatnot. And I think that that's absolutely true because there was a movie that came out. I just looked it up, came out in 2017. It's called the circle with Tom Hanks and Emma Watson. Mm-hmm. Have y'all seen that? I saw it a long I've time ago. I kind of forget the premise, though. Dude, it's basically about just, like, Big Brother literally everywhere. And, mm-hmm. like, social credit system kind of situation. But mm-hmm. he was basically Tom Hanks. He was, like, one of the main people who was trying to set the whole thing up. And he goes, don't you know that people will act different whenever they're being watched? So let's put mm-hmm. eyes all over the world. And right. it was like, ah, oh, dude, like it's, mm-hmm. ah, it stinks. I it's think got I've, a stench I've to it. I've mentioned that before. It's like, as far as all the surveillance cameras that are everywhere now, you can't go anywhere without seeing a surveillance camera. And so maybe there's some kind of quantum effect on, on us that we're not really fully aware of. But yeah. um, that's yeah. like that movie. What was that um, one where they like know you're going to commit a crime before you even commit it like there oh, is, what is that one um minority report yeah yeah that's mm-hmm. freaky i i think we're close to that too if they can predict what we want to watch on tiktok tomorrow mm-hmm. and exactly like how we're going to behave mm-hmm. how how far off is that from saying oh now we can predict that you're going to commit a crime oh well i you, mean you, i mean even more than that they could they could uh put things together in order for us to behave a certain way that they want us to. You know what I mean? It can go either way with that, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, and the thing is, is that it's not so much that it's kind of like, and I've heard it broken down in a different kind of way, but essentially they're... How do I want to put that? The, essentially, the, they're they're kind of putting all this information out in front of you on certain social media platforms, and you think, oh, well, that's a synchronicity. I was just thinking about that, right? And mm-hmm. so the idea of that even goes a little bit farther as to say that they're the ones that implanted the original idea, which makes you think that this is a synchronicity, mm-hmm. which is fucking nuts. You know what I mean? Like, because now they're, yeah. they're absolutely controlling your thoughts. And like, there are certain like, like real, like word wizards out there that can absolutely say a, like a paragraph worth of words and they will convince you without telling you what you want. Mm-hmm. Right. It's like the right. craziest thing, dude. All that oh, neurolinguistic I, I, I programming. I saw something recently as far as like the, even the comments, you know, the comments aren't even just like organically like coming in in real time. It's kind of with the algorithm and they might put some comments that you might not like or or and, and control it that way. And so like you're not even having uh, organic comments with people. It's more what the algorithm decides based on who you are. And it's just like uh, what's what's real anymore? Exactly. You know? And that's what's scary with like all of this the quantum physics, because if we like our perception of reality is our reality. So if they're manipulating our moods and our vibrations and, you know, like you, I mean, that's wild with the comments. So, you know, you mm-hmm. post something and, and all these like terrible comments at you and stuff, you know, they're, they're like creating even more depression and all of these issues that are getting worse mm-hmm. and worse and worse. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, yeah, that's terrible. Yeah. I noticed that too, because uh, I don't usually go to the comments. Like sometimes I will, but for the most part, I I will absorb something, think on it, and and just move to the next thing or or what have you. But w- w- I have noticed that when I do go to the comments, there's always that first comment that's like the most extreme, the other way, or or just like trying to pick up some kind of uh, steam. You know what I mean? To to get people angry or whatever, and then all the rest of them are kind of just trying to defend that person and it's like I don't know, it's just weird it's just weird yeah yeah agreed well if we look at quantum entanglement that's kind of um when you were talking about the two atoms so like quantum entanglement is basically like two particles that are interconnected and that's like what defies you know physics that mm-hmm. no matter what the distance between them one state the state of one particle can instantaneously like affect mm-hmm. the other particle yep. um so if we imagine like every single thought or desire as a quantum particle um the quantum field so that like fabric of reality would mm-hmm. suggest that it exists in multiple possibilities until the observer effect being observed or measured um so our consciousness as the observer 
collapses that wave function of that desire into reality. Mm -hmm. So again, like focusing on an intention, you can influence the possibility of what comes out of your reality. Mm -hmm. So when we look at specifically the observer effect, like applied to our, to our world. Um, so scientists, of course, like theorize that reality is not fixed. The physical world might not exist as an objective independent entity, but instead it could be constructed or influenced by the act of observation. Mm -hmm. So I know like in like a lot of talks, you know, when people want to talk about if this is all a um, simulation or um, that, you know, time doesn't exist and all this stuff. So it's pretty wild when you start to apply also um, the hologram, the holographic like theory. So is it, is that because our re our consciousness, our reality of how we see the world is like a holographic image that is being reflected of what we actually experience. Does that make sense? <laughs> I, you know, Absolutely. I've thought about this a lot lately, especially yeah. with the stuff that we've been going over. And the more we start to really understand what we're made of and how we can manipulate, you know, our thoughts and our emotions and our reality and how the human body works. And it's, it's so strange that almost everything points to this life being a matrix in some form or fashion. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say it's just like Neo and, and like that kind of matrix, but like there definitely seems to be some kind of like computer stink to this reality like in a sense all right so we've talked about it before basically you know we're made up of all these atoms atoms are 99.9 percent .9 empty all right well then why am i here like if mm -hmm. i'm 99.9 percent .9 emptiness then so you're trying to tell me that this is only 0.1 percent of what i am then what am i you know, like that, that'll make you question some things whenever you go and you're, you're, you're walking down the hallway and you stub your toe. Well, your toe doesn't hurt. It's just a sensor in your toe that's shooting back up to your brain to tell you that your toe hurts. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's nuts how all of this works. Like that's why magic works. That's why witchcraft and Wicca and prayer and like all these different religions, you know, that every religion works. How crazy is that? Every mm -hmm. single religion, every single thought form, every single divination tool that you use, as long as you believe it, mm -hmm. it works. Mm -hmm. Tell me that's not the matrix. Like, tell me that's <laughs> not a video game. Like, it's crazy. Like, this reality is absolutely not what we think it is. <laughs> yeah, totally insane. And then, like, it makes me think, because, you know, believing like everyone's connected, and I always like to think of mushrooms and, you know, mm -hmm. being like everybody connected. So if we like take that with quantum entanglement and all of the stuff on top of that, that we're being like fed all the time. So, and on mass scale. So like, you know, the Olympics have, you know, mo the majority of people like the major. So the majority of the atoms or the majority of the mushrooms are watching. Right. But yet everything's connected. So I think that there is a reason that they need to control so much on such a mass scale because we don't even realize that, you know, sure, we're always focused so much on the individual and the individual, what we can manifest and what we can bring into reality. And sure, we can like, you know, manipulate different things. But I think that the power lies in, you know, the whole field of mushrooms. And like, if everyone's perception changed, I think that's mm -hmm. when we go from 3D to 5D. So they're trying to like keep us in this state of like lethargy and, you know, depression. And and I mean, anytime you talk to people, it's like, oh, did you hear about blah, 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 you know, and mm -hmm. it's just, it's, it's, you can feel the weight and that's like going to stop us from rising up. And, and we're so focused individually. Like, I think we need to start thinking about the collective and we need to start taking like way more seriously the things that we are letting them show us on tv and you know all of these influences that we're allowing to you know bring I, the mushrooms 
absolutely agree with that. And to be honest, like going down this spiritual path, it is kind of a lonely road, especially if you live in a house full of people that may call you crazy. Like that's Mm -hmm. an app. Like I see it on a daily basis, not just with me, but everybody else who's into the same kind of weird spiritual shit as me. They all feel the same kind of judgment. You're either called a sinner. You're called a crazy person. You're called this. You're called that. You're called all the things in the book, even though you know, at like some weird, really high scale, all this information that you're taking in vibrates with you at such a level that it can't be anything but the truth. But how can you try and tell somebody that? They haven't experienced that 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 mm-hmm. just amazing feeling that you may get during a medita- meditation mm-hmm. or a tarot reading or a prayer or like, you know, all of these majestic things during a mushroom trip, whatever you want to call it. Like there are things that we experience on a personal level that makes you feel very boxed out from the rest of everybody. And I think that it is time like there you do get to a certain point that like, all right, that's enough. I figured out enough to where I don't have to box myself in. Now, now, like, how can I start, like, putting myself back into reality a little bit? And, like, you know, like this newer, more evolved, understanding version of metaphysics and the universe and the nature of reality. How can I just mix that back into the big bowl of reality with, you know, it doesn't matter if you got some NPCs walking around. Hey, fucking, you know, hang out with them. Like, just because you have so much different doesn't mean that you can't intermingle. Like, Jesus hung out with the bitches and the hoes, am I right? Like, we can do some <laughs> shit like that. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm not yeah, saying we're Jesus by any means. About as far as everybody getting on board is that you know it is very subjective, and and uh, people are going to vibe with whatever they're vibing with, and to them they are the lucky ones because they get to enjoy what they're enjoying at the moment, and what we're doing is is like way off track from what they're thinking about doing, and so I don't I don't I would like to think that everybody can just get on the same page and just you know make life better for everybody, but. Everybody's so different. I, I, you know, there's never going to be another Jonathan. You know what I'm saying? Well, there's never. So here's like I think the answer is unplugging right from the matrix, and the only way to do that is in meditation. So mm-hmm. like nobody cares what anybody, and it, it can be you know whatever your type of meditation too. So mm-hmm. I feel like this like entanglement is stronger when we're in meditation. And that might be for other, like you said, like all the people like find it in a different way. But if somebody is in a deep state of prayer, um, they could still probably, you know, get to that same frequency. So it's Mm -hmm. like, if we just, if everyone found their way to unplug, and even if it was just going and sitting in the woods and they're like, oh, I don't meditate, but I love to sit in the woods, you know, like a form of meditation. If, right. Exactly. So if everyone can just find their their version, mm-hmm. um, I think we can all kind of end up at the same spot, mm-hmm. not even meaning to. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I think we just need to, like you said, unplug. Uh, my wife, uh, I don't usually, I don't go on TikTok or nothing, but um, I, I still had the TikTok account from when I was doing the cult TikToks, but my wife will send me a TikTok and I'll watch it, you know, and then I go to like exit TikTok. I have to press the back button like three or four times to get to, to get out of TikTok. It's like, it doesn't want you to leave. <laughs> That's kind of strange. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, but I I agree that the, the unplugging through meditation or however you do it that's very important. And honestly, like you know, I got to thinking. You know, we had um, Brandy Anderson on uh, what was it a like a week ago or so, and she wrote the book um, Through the Veil. I can't remember the rest of it, a but glimpse into the afterlife. Glimpse into the afterlife through the veil. Very, very interesting stuff. Basically, like if um, if for anybody that hasn't you know uh, listened to that episode. This woman, she had a Roku TV in her living room and basically it just started typing messages. Nobody had the remote. Nobody had the app downloaded on their phone or anything, but there was little messages that were left. And uh, after a little while, she understood that that was like her grandmother sending her messages. And I know it sounds crazy, but the way in which she was getting this information, she is 100 percent convinced. I mean, She's getting messages from the other side, from her grandmother, not with her human understanding, but like her uh, ethereal level of understanding. And, you know, that made me think like, all right, I feel like we have 
a, a semblance of that understanding whenever we're in meditation or whenever, you know, we're in like a past life regression or a mushroom trip or, you know what I mean? Like that, that kind of information that Brandy was getting from her grandmother is the same or at least similar kind of information that you would get in an altered state of mind, be it meditation or psychedelic or whatever, I think. Well, with Brandy, um, do you think now, like this just made me think, so maybe her grandmother was tapping in because it was probably a smart TV. Yeah. So tapping into the AI's like the smart TV consciousness. And that's the reason that was like a mode because you think of it like roots and that like, you know, that she was that's able why to it tap would even into be that possible, consciousness, right? right? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. She was sinking right up to it. And, you know, she mm -hmm. said the crazy thing was, so you know how those smart TVs you go and you're searching for something on Netflix or whatever, right? You got to go letter by letter. No, this was all coming word by word by word by word. So mm -hmm. like nobody was typing that in. Like you can't you can't like, type enough consciousness. Like she was like downloading it mm -hmm. in a That's weird cool. yeah. way. I said, dude, I got two Roku TVs in my house. I'm waiting for that message. Like give me something <laughs> from the other side. You went out and got two Rokus that night. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't know if you want that. I don't know. Yeah. It depends on who it's coming from. Like, it depends on who it's coming from, though. Like, if it's yeah, like somebody, from. like a relative, me and Sean, we're cousins, so we have, you know, relatives who have passed over to the other side. Um, mm -hmm. It would be interesting to get one of them. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Oh, yeah. 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 Um, I think with the, like, interconnectedness and, and having the yin-yang and the opposites, too, um, it also kind of makes sense that, you know, the, the dark or the elite or whatever um, – is needing to keep us having those the balance against like the light right because that's what created this universe out of that black hole so if we were to lose the yin and yang and like go all light to me like this universe would cease to exist right and that's probably mm -hmm. like this elevation that happens into the 5d which we know the the 5d space is all love and light and just like the God space. So that would make sense because it's losing that counterpart because it's a totally mm -hmm. different type of dimensional experience that doesn't need that boom with the light and dark. Yeah, I think, think that, that that's what that other side is when we were having that mushroom trip, dude, and we close our eyes and we see that light show and it feels like just bliss and you just want to smile and you feel this unconditional love. Do you think that that's what we're possibly peeking into? Just because our mind is allowing yes. us to. I think you're inside of like that dimension, that realm, whatever you want to call it. I think you are there. And mm -hmm. so now you're pushing off all the heavy denseness of this life. Like you ain't got to worry about bills. You ain't got to worry about what you ate earlier on today. And, and you're feeling all bogged down or you, you haven't drank enough water. So you, you're going to feel tired or lazy. You forgot to meditate. So now, you know, you're going to be all discombobul uh, discombobulated or whatever. Like on mm -hmm. that side, it's given. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like that's the that's the amazing thing that's, about whatever is going on over there is that everything that we strive to feel like, to think like, to be like, you know, mm -hmm. just that 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 weightless kind of nothing could possibly go wrong kind of mentality. I think that that is just the state of that being that's the over there. Over there, yeah. yeah, yeah. I you 100 percent experience that. Um, I think that as so long as like this three-dimensional world still exists i think we can't go there and stay there right um because there's always that we have to kind of come back but um it's always interesting because i think a lot of people are kind of freaked out by the idea of like not having a human form like that always kind of like freaks so people when they picture like heaven they picture themselves still everyone in their human forms walking around the clouds mm -hmm. um but when you get into that deep state of meditation, it's like, I, I, like most people I know, you know, you just, you don't want to leave. It's pure mm -hmm. bliss. It's, it's perfect. It's perfection. You don't need, you don't want, you don't, it, there's not even thought. It's like mm -hmm. just it, uh, a merging of fluffy cotton candy, 
perfectness, right? Yeah, <laughs> and it's funny too because, and I don't know, you know, the percentage of the one out there that listens to our meditations or listens to, you know, what we talk about after the meditation, but most recently we did a meditation and um, it was, oh, what was it again, Sean? Oh, it was like Kabbalion kind of meditation, mm-hmm. wasn't it? Yep. So we did that meditation and while I was in that, because it was such a weird rhythm to the song, like it was almost dark, like it was like a magic kind of meditation. Mm. And, uh, but I liked it. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, but for some reason, my consciousness went straight to like being on another planet and I'm on this planet planet and it's dark and it's cold, it's windy, but I can tell there's like some kind of, like, I can tell where I'm at, you know? And then I stumble across like this, um, this fucking being that was like emitting blue light from his body. Um, almost like, almost looked like he was blue, but it looked like his, ambiance or whatever his aura or whatever was like super super like electric blue and um and i I was having a conversation with him and it's like the craziest thing how am i having a conversation with another thing in meditation i'm i don't think that it's my own mind because kind of the message i got was pretty neat and so he goes what are you doing here and I was like, oh, I'm just, I'm just here. You know, I, I, I was meditating and my, my consciousness, like, I guess took me here and he's all, uh, and so I asked him, I was like, well, what are you doing here? And he goes, well, I got to, whenever I come here, it's so that I can, um, uh, I come here so that I can try and match the frequency of this planet. So then that, so then I can take that frequency and it'll help me in another situation. So basically like he went to that planet to pick up that frequency because he knew, he knew that it would help him in another kind of situation. I didn't get in detail. I honestly kind of thought that it was like some kind of war kind of stuff um, because it seemed like Neptune or Pluto or like one of those like super far out kind of planets. And, um, but it's just so interesting, like the certain weird messages that you can get during just a simple meditation. I'm not on any psychedelics or anything like that. Like why, why would my mind go there? It doesn't, I don't know, okay. I, whatever you, know, you want to call it. really freaking weird. Okay. Oh. So on Tuesday I put out my podcast, um, rooted frequency. Um, if anybody wants to come join my 20 listeners, um, that'll be down but- in the show notes. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, but it was about, um, like a going, like me talking about what I've experienced when I've done meditations to talk to like my Lumerian starseed family. And, um, I had planned to do a meditation with that one, but I kind of got off track and it ended up being like just me talking. And I was like, okay, I'll surprise you guys with like a, a meditation mid week. Cause I only put the episodes out on Tuesdays. So I, was recording that like before we just got on it is all like low tones it's nothing but tones this is what i was like told to do you start by picturing a vibrant blue light on your third eye that's pulsing to match like frequencies of the tones what and you just fucking like that's just so weird you pulled that down from the ether dude no prior knowledge at all of that what day yeah. what day was this on? Well, no, I'm like right before we all jumped on and I said, you know, I was doing other stuff. I'm yeah. recording it right now. I'm going to probably put it up like tomorrow or something. Oh my god, <laughs> yeah. dude. Like literally was sitting here recording the meditation and putting all those like cuz I made it like myself with all the little beats and the tones and everything. Mm. And um and I wasn't even going to do that, but a lot, you know, I, everything usually, I just kind of like empty my mind all the time when I do meditations and mm-hmm. allow my like highest self to just like give me ideas and stuff. And I started with, yeah, a blue light, emptying your mind, a blue, like a pulsating blue light. Mm-hmm. And this is so people can like feel connections to other planets. And you were uh, like on another planet. What is that? You know what I, I know. mean? So like, it's like it's like the the universe isn't fucking around. That's what I mean. <laughs> right. You know, like when stuff like this happens, it's like, mm-hmm. okay, you you really are talking to me because that there's is... no way like we could fake that. You know. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, in that same meditation, um, I really was kind of like not disappointed, but just you know, compared to Jonathan's experience within that seeing this light, blue being, and all this, 
I I really just had like vision of like the ocean and like I was almost level with it. And so I was seeing the, you know, just the water was kind of just being super random, like a waveform, you know. And I was like, oh, you know, it's interesting, but I don't really know what to do with that. We got done recording and I went out to the living room and my wife is watching the Olympics surfing and they're in the water and it's showing the ocean. And I'm like, OK, so maybe I tapped into her consciousness seeing and I and maybe I tapped into what she was looking at. I mean, because it was pretty random. Mm-hmm. I wasn't intentionally trying to go. Let's go to the ocean. Maybe and a little so, remote viewing too, like maybe something. You went out and there and something. I'll tell you what I I'm gonna tell you what I think I'm starting to figure out how to do that. To be really? honest, yeah, 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 I think so. I and it just happened last night actually. So basically, I was I was uh, trying to go to sleep, you know. And lately, what I've been doing is I, is I haven't been going to sleep right away. Um, I've been actually just kind of sitting there with my eyes closed and just kind of enjoying the the shapes and the you know whatever it is that i'm seeing if it's my brain just making things up because there's a void of of visuals whatever it is it doesn't matter and so i'm enjoying that and to be honest it's actually taking me a little longer to go to sleep because of that it's like it's like i'm overly conscious trying to go to an unconscious state of mind you know what i mean and so i'm I'm super conscious about when I'm about to fall asleep. Like it's super strange. I never had this problem before. Usually I close my eyes. I, I go to sleep in a minute. I'm I'm done. But anyways, so last night I, I had my eyes shut and I, I started seeing like these swirlies. Like there was like three of them over here, like moving almost like a ceiling fan. Right. Like, but there's like three of them. And then all of a sudden it goes and it converges and it turns into one ceiling fan with detail and everything. And I'm looking at it. And then it goes away because I was like kind of shocked that it happened. And so I don't know. I don't know if I just got some sort of higher vantage point and I really don't know, but I'm going to keep exploring that because I feel like it's something rather well, than nothing. Okay. So the whole reason I've been going down this like consciousness rabbit mm-hmm. hole is because it started like a few weeks back or maybe like a month, but I don't know. Is it? times where everybody can agree like time is super weird now i have no Mm -hmm. idea what what is happening it's simultaneous Um, anyway yeah it's like i don't know so but so many people kept saying to me um i don't know why but i feel like i'm like disconnected like like i'm watching a movie for my life like everything has a, a lens on it or like um, you know, I'm inside my body watching like my life. And and mm-hmm. I've heard this from dozens of people. Just I was literally just so much higher. I was yeah. literally so, thinking this earlier today. That's so weird. Of course dude. you were. So, I was too. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, so, so like Sean, to your point. So I, w- when I had my last, me- like, this is what I've, I've, I think is happening. I think that our consciousness is um, as we elevate right? And we're transitioning into this 5D. And if we think about this, how we're all connected, this like network that Mm -hmm. we're all, you know, that when we pull away from like our physical 3D body, Mm -hmm. that we're actually trying to merge into like 5D consciousness. Mm -hmm. And that's why like, so people I think are getting glimpses of it without even knowing it. Mm -hmm. So it like feels like you're like, an observer and then that's what like sent me down the whole like observer effect because Mm -hmm. if we're all like changing the way our consciousness works doesn't that make sense then that we're observing things through a different way that can also affect the world and why like the dark is freaking out and trying to like keep us all down because we're like we're, we're floating like we're mm-hmm. leaving dude this is wild because I, it's not very uh, it's not very often that i remember my dreams or even what i was thinking right before like the moment i actually fell asleep but you just like stirred something up that made me remember like what i was thinking about as i was falling asleep so you're in that theta state of mind which is mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. best place to be in meditationally oh yeah and i was thinking oh wow it's so interesting i i I, I can understand, at least in some kind of way, how people are saying that 
you know, this fourth dimension, fifth dimension, all these higher dimensions are going to start happening. And it's and it's not going to be some kind of crazy thing that happens all at once. It'll just be kind of gradual. And so I started yeah. I started envisioning what that life would be like, you know, and and for some reason, I got the feeling of exactly what it would be like, you know, like this crazy struggle that everybody's always in this state of fear that everybody's always in always the anxious, always the pre- uh, the depressing stuff and or you're always stressed out or whatever. It's like once once you become like conscious of how the matrix works, at least a little bit, once mm-hmm. you once once that comes to you. Now you're flowing with the river rather than against it. And I think that that's kind of what like the fifth dimension would be is that you would feel lighter because you're going with the flow because you're conscious of how it works. And so now, you know, you know, you're not just like some fish in the water swimming upstream or swimming to the side or spiking up and down or anything like that. Like you're just flowing with it because you know like, you know, your role, you know what you're supposed to do. And with that brings a lot of like, that's, that's like a lot of relaxation and a lot of like Mm -hmm. better understanding whenever you can just flow with it, you know, like being in a constant state, like that constant flow state, there's something really magical about that. And I think that that might be what the fifth dimension is. I don't know. I'm still getting there, but that's what I was thinking about last (laughs) night. (laughs) <laughs> trying to figure it out though that's where we are you know what i mean like the the just the level of awareness um i was i was sitting in my living room and usually i got two dogs they're big dogs and whenever somebody passes by or 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 knocks on the door of course they're fucking barking you know and it's 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 startling and then of course it, when they start barking it, it just it alerts me that okay well there there might be a threat outside or there's somebody coming to the door i need to get on alert you know and just today for the first time when they started barking I, instead of giving myself like that little sense of anxiety, like, oh, there might be something I need to get ready. Like what I did this time was I just sat there and I said, well, if there's something, at least now I'm aware, but I don't need to get myself all worked up and stressed out before it even happens, you know? And so in that, in that regard, I, I controlled the experience I was having with my mind, you know, Mm -hmm. like, I know it sounds so simple, but Oh, it's you harder. You really have that power. You yeah. really have that power. It's definitely harder than it sounds. That's one of those like simple but not easy kind of situations. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel that, dude. Like just knowing how to react in the situation. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. looking back at it like Monday morning quarterback style or whatever, you're like, oh, mm-hmm. yeah, like in that situation, I shouldn't let myself get stressed out or whatever. But whenever you're in that situation, it's an entirely different story. And, oh, yeah. and the, the sheer fact that you came to that realization in mm-hmm. the moment that you would be tripping the fuck out. What right. are these dogs barking at? I'm tired of them mm-hmm. barking at what's outside. And, you know, you're you're in that mm-hmm. state of fear. You like kind of sucked yourself out of your own body and you're looking right. at it old third person style mm-hmm. and you're like, okay, well, there's no reason to really be tripping about this kind of right. shit because like, and, and I know that's a, a simple, a simple, uh, you know, example of that. But I mean, my dogs bark like 15, 16 times a day, you know? And so how many times does my heart go, Oh, I got to get ready. There's something about to happen. And it's like, I know it's a simple little thing, but that's something that we can expand on on every uh, experience that we're having, just have that awareness. And in that moment, I even remember putting my awareness into how my body was feeling and I was super relaxed and I just stayed in that moment because there was nothing to worry about right now. I wanted to ask you, uh, Tiffany, about the, you said the conscious force field or Mm -hmm. consciousness force field. Mm -hmm. Can you go into that? I'm a little interested about that. Yeah. Um, it like basically is measurable like around us. Like we have a, an actual force field Mm -hmm. around us as beings. So, I mean, I essentially, like I would think they're finding like scientifically measuring our auras, right. Cause we can feel into like people's Mm -hmm. energy bubble around them. I don't. um, And like it, it, we can manipulate, Manipulate it based on our emotions. So when they've done mm-hmm. like studies, if people are happy, if people are sad, if people are anxious, and um, you know this that this the frequency of the field will change. So absolutely, like when we say we like vibe with things, like we're literally vibing all the time. Mm-hmm. And you know right. what they they actually proved that with uh, tuning forks. 
Like they can prove yeah, yeah. that your your bubble of consciousness is absolutely outside of you, or it at least also exists outside of you. And mm-hmm. it's almost like like Bubble Boy. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like that's what it makes me think of, or like fucking Glenda the Good Witch, or something like that. It's like that is our like personal mm-hmm. bubble of consciousness, and they can right. measure how big that is with tuning mm-hmm. forks by just tuning them to the same kind of frequency and like Mm -hmm. you know basically you'll just like strike a tuning fork and that that frequency of the tuning fork can start to affect that bubble of consciousness dude like uh, the the experiments that they do i mean Mm -hmm. you you can find them all over youtube and i'm sure tiktok and stuff like that but it's so interesting well, what I wonder about that is, you know, because you called it like a force field and and mm-hmm. sure, we have this energy that's outside of us. What I wonder is how big can we make that? You know what oh, I mean? How make- how far out can we make that reach? Like, can I can I fill up an entire grocery store with my aura or is it limited to, only, you know, five, six feet? You can. That's what I want. Um, no, you can. So like even um, one of the first things that's kind of like fun to do, I always tell people when they want to play with their energy is to um, like try to pull it in and make yourself really small. So a lot of times we'll do that. Like if you need to like pop into the grocery store and you really don't want to talk to anybody, you know, like you just kind of like, and then you mm-hmm. have those days where you like aren't really thinking about your aura and you go somewhere Mm -hmm. and for whatever reason, every single person wants to come up and talk to you, you know, Mm -hmm. and people are just drawn to you. So you have like this very open aura, Mm -hmm. but you can also like learn to, to literally like, like even right now, like I can feel mine, you know, I start to just push it out and you can start with like just deep breaths. And with each exhale, like just picture your aura pressing Mm -hmm. out, pressing out. Mm -hmm. And even, um, when I was, I was teaching this, um, I was doing like a workshop and I got called to, um, jury duty and I was sitting like around, um, and they were calling jurors up or whatever. Um, and I was like, Oh, I'm, you know, it was pretty boring. So I was like, I'm going to play with my aura, I guess. So I started like pushing it out, you know? Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. So there was like two men on each side of me though. And I started pushing my aura, pushing my aura. And, um, the guy to the right of me was like already kind of like had a little bit more space. He looks so me he was all, kind of you're pushing your aura right now. No, he <laughs> moved. He moved. Like he he scooted over. Oh, like wow. like he got uncomfortable. I think like so people can feel this, and I like giggled to myself. You know that I was because I was trying. You know you can play with your energy. Like I always try mm-hmm. to like uh, do that to see, get somebody to turn around too. Like if mm-hmm. you want to play with that. But mm-hmm. before I forget, I had this thought long back um okay what if the reason we dream is because if they can't risk that if everyone were to like sleep like the majority of people at the same time would we cease to exist because we wouldn't be conscious so if everyone's what so explain that again like if if everyone's asleep at the same time like if enough of us so like thinking of consciousness if enough of us like merge with the consciousness we're thinking like we're going to be able to rise up into 5d right Mm. so if enough of us were asleep for whatever reason like i'm I'm, like yes the whole earth isn't going to be asleep at the same time but what if Mm. it's like a built-in fail safe because if we were to like all go to sleep and like god had us have you know be completely unconscious like you just you know dead asleep um that there would be no awareness yes, existing so, anymore so and nobody there wasn't enough like there wasn't enough consciousness like the unconscious outweighed mm-hmm. the conscious and right. we would just poop just and cease to poof. exist yeah that's an just, interesting thought i've never isn't heard that, of that before yeah, me neither i just thought oh wow <laughs> kind of makes so me then the dream what is the dream doing just keeping some level of of like awareness some le- or experience yeah, brain waves. happening yeah that's brain interesting waves. i've never thought of that i don't know it makes me think of uh the mayans you know, mm. like the whole theory that they kind of just like all poofed out of existence together. <gasps> you just gave me goosebumps. That, I mean, that might be it because it said that like you would, that you would is? go back. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you would go we, back in their villages. Brilliant. Like people would go back in their villages and like, you know, their their doors were wide open. It's not like they took anything with them. Like you think you would take a thing or two if you're going on some kind of journey or trekking or whatever. But like most of the time, a village, you would have, 
you know, you would have your hunters, you would have your gatherers, you would have, you know, maybe the men of the family would be doing all that kind of stuff while the women would stay home and nurturing the kids and cooking or whatever, like whatever the, the roles were. But like, it's, you wouldn't have everybody gone at the same time is basically the point. And if that, if that place was, you know, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe like snuck up on by, um, an enemy or something like that, you would see bloodshed. You would see maybe arrows or, or some kind of, uh, weapon that, that would have caused some kind of destruction, but nothing like, it's almost like they left within a blink of an eye. And that's why people think that like, yo, maybe they collectively all got together and said, we're going to raise our consciousness collectively together and maybe jump out of this dimension. I don't know. It's just a theory, but that's something that like, there's no remnants of it. And yeah. and what's crazy is, is that there are still like, there were still Mayans after that. I think it was just mainly mm -hmm. the village or the, the place where the majority of them were living or whatever. that just like fucking poofed out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Well, I, I, go ahead. Tiffany. Oh, I was just going to like, what if, um, dreaming the reason like ancient civilizations were so obsessed with documenting dreaming and studying dreams is because everyone didn't, dream so like that could have happened where you know they needed to figure out how to have consciousness like how to learn how to dream and through evolution now we like all dream mm -hmm. yeah dreams are dreams are a very interesting thing uh, this is something dreams and consciousness those are like the my two like heavy hitters right now as far as how my mind has been working lately like for some reason consciousness is up there as far as yeah. like i was just talking to my wife about it earlier and 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 realizing like you know she's trying to do her schooling and she's focusing on that and here i am trying to figure out consciousness like you know what i mean but but yeah it's so fascinating and one of the the weird thoughts i had and, and maybe it's nothing but i'll throw it out there but you know with with, with terrence howard i know that he's you know he he might be onto something, but he doesn't really know how to explain it or whatever. I'm not really too sure what's going on with that. But you know how he he was talking about the flower of life, and there's that little space in between the spheres, and it's like a weird you know triangular prism or however you want to call it. And is there something to that? Like, does that maybe does that represent consciousness? Like, it's the space in between the the auras, if you will. I don't know. It was just a weird thought that I had, and I was like. Maybe there's something to that. I or is know. that like the point one percent of the atom of which makes up the material the reality? Physical reality. Right. Oh shit, dude. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm just it's speculating. Always, it's always blown my mind that they um, have studied. You know, like after you die, that you weigh less. That mm -hmm. the soul, the soul weighs something by like a matter of grams or something. Like it's so yeah. small, but it's measurable and it's repeatable. Yeah. Yeah. That there's definitely something that's making you lighter. Which yeah. means that your soul weighs something. Yeah. That's, <laughs> That's freaking weird. crazy. Oh, yeah. Or maybe not even that. And there's other ways of looking at that, too. It's not even necessarily that your soul weighs something. But think about it like alternatively. All right. Mm -hmm. So we got all these we got all these cells and atoms and, you know, blood and bone density and skin and everything everything that makes up our own material body. But then you add this foreign substance, which nobody knows how to measure, but we all know that it's real. And you add that into the blood, into the bone, into the hair, into the skin follicles and everything. And maybe mm -hmm. it almost swells it up a little bit, almost like it's taken on a little bit of water or something like that. And mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe I, I don't, I'm just speculating possibilities, mm -hmm. but I think that like it could be nothing, but maybe your like it could uh, the the consciousness or whatever could weigh nothing but then maybe whenever it enters your body it has an effect on everything else in your body and causes it to weigh a little bit more mm -hmm. i don't know oh mm -hmm. yeah oh mm -hmm. yeah for sure and i wanted to go back to what you were saying tiffany as far as like uh, people going to sleep and not having a dream and so all awareness is gone like i guess i have kind of thought about that as far as if if there were no people let's say it's earth space humans and that's it there's nothing mm -hmm. else let's say if all humans cease to exist then there would be nothing like it's I, you know what i mean as far as consciousness goes there there would be nothing in existence the only reason why it even exists is because we're here to see it right mm -hmm. yeah so i mean it, yeah it's a wild thought to think like even just big bang theory so it's it's almost like all of these like did all of these uh, universes that 
exist or have the potential to exist. They all existed and didn't exist. And there happened mm. to be like a spotlight of some sort of consciousness, which probably is God source consciousness mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on this. And then boom, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, if it can boom into existence, it could boom out of existence, right? Mm. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's just the weirdest thing that a boom and rocks and fire and whatever else that came out of that turned into something that's us here talking on a podcast about said thing. Oh, that, makes no sense. that just <laughs> that blows my mind you know like, take we'll, a rock we'll and then blow it up and then that piece of rock decides to start thinking evolve or whatever the word is and start thinking about itself and start making ideas of of how it all came to be that that right there just trips me out yeah well okay. i mean <laughs> i like to look at it maybe from a little bit different of an angle so i I don't know how I feel about the Big Bang Theory. Maybe it happened, maybe it didn't. But like when we're speculating on, you know, the Big Bang or the tiniest atom that exploded into what we know as everything material reality in a sense. Mm -hmm. But then we also know the material reality is not what we think it is. I mm -hmm. think that it's highly possible that like maybe uh, God or the creator or the universe or whatever you want to call it, I think that that we're all just like a thought. And I think that everything is just kind of a thought. And if you really think about it, like how many thoughts do we have in one day? It's like thousands, right? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. thousands of thoughts in one day. And each one of those thoughts might not materialize. Some of them do eventually, if you think about them enough though, right? But like mm -hmm. each one of those thoughts, they don't always materialize, but they do affect our body in some kind of way. Every single mm -hmm. thought will always affect. That's why they always say, like, you know, watch what you think about because it does have an effect on you. Mm -hmm. And so is it possible that God just thought and that's what we experience it? That's what we're experiencing. Like, think about it like, all right, well, uh, I mean, it's almost like I don't even know where where I can even take that. You know what I mean? But I just I just wonder if we're not just all part of like God's imagination or something well, like that. I totally can see that because think about like when you dream um, and, you know, like you you wake up and you tell somebody about your dream and, you know, it was like two seconds. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and they say that's how fast we have the dream. So then if time, you know, and like doesn't in space don't exist, mm -hmm. like, yeah, like, could it be a singular thought that feels like a lifetime to us? Mm -hmm. You know? Oh, yeah. At this point, I could be on my laptop, laptop talking to nobody. You know what I mean? I don't even know oh, anymore. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh my god! I just Whoa, like, like I'm like, <laughs> dude. Check it out. According to research, the average person has approximately sixty thousand thoughts per day. Mm -hmm. Sixty thousand, and we're one person. You know what I'm saying? Imagine yeah. the creator of everything. All those thoughts that are constantly going on, all at the same time. I think you, all right. So in any given day, let's, where's my phone at? Let me do a little math. We're getting weird over here, dude. <laughs> all right. So it. what was it? How many people are there on, on the earth? It's like 8 billion, right? Over 8 billion. Yep. That sounds right. Okay. So 8 billion times 60,000. That's not even a number. Um, it just blows up. <laughs> it's 4.8 times 10 to the 14th power. Yep, I don't know what number that is, but it's a shit ton. It's a <laughs> lot. So let's just say that if we are all one and everything that we think is individualized and separate, but we really are all one thing, you and me and Tiffany and this table and this microphone and everybody listening, we all think we're all individuals, but if we are all just one, all of those thoughts are happening all the time, which may actually, probably, most likely create our reality in any given day 60,000 times 8 billion it's highly possible that i think it's i mean it's highly possible i would suggest that like that's just all of god's thoughts in any given day and that that's what we call material reality that's why all this shit it's unbelievable like that's maybe that's why we see the synchronicities because it's like well, we're all connected anyway, and in mm -hmm. everything that exists, it's all connected anyway. So, mm -hmm. you know, your vibration is just affecting your material reality in some kind of way because none of it's fucking material in the first place. Yes, mm -hmm. and like and if you think of it, that's why magic like, is real. 
Right. <laughs> yes. But if you think of it in the like in the quantum way, so like all of the thoughts as like hot, so all of the thoughts are like little bubbles that are all exist as possibilities. And then if like enough people have one thought, then that bubble gets bigger. And then that one like takes the space, you know, mm-hmm. that that one is going to come to reality. So like if enough mm-hmm. of us think that, you know, there's going to be a terrorist attack, there's mm-hmm. going to be a terrorist attack. If enough mm-hmm. of us, you know, like start to, yeah, like splinter off and think one thing, then yeah, those synchronicities happen. And all of a sudden, all the spiritual community is all talking about the same thing. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. I mean, there's no, there's no, um, uh, coincidence that we were all kind of mm-hmm. thinking about consciousness and and kind of the same tone of where our brain what our brains were doing right before this podcast. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's any kind of there's no coincidence there. It's Absolutely just so not. trippy, dude. That like they always say, there's nothing new under the sun. It's like, of mm-hmm. course there isn't because we are all that everything everything that ever has existed exists within us as much as we have existed within them even before we were here mm-hmm. you know it's like oh man or like, this shit is you know so how they they say like um the, like the holographic world stuff is weird to me but like with your thing about it being a thought so like what if um yeah like the thought like a, a thought bubble existence but the reason they say like holographic is because it's sort of like echoes and and so we're we're vibrationally going through that thought in like more real time than that split second thought and that's Mm -hmm. why so you know because they always say like if that's true all of our decisions are kind of made up for us so like that side of Mm -hmm. things could also be true too because we're just like going through that thought it could mm-hmm. be. I think that like thoughts are definitely contagious. And yeah. I think that like that contagion affects everybody and everything that you're close to in a weird way. Mm-hmm. You know, like why is it that, you know, I, I wake up and I think of the number 88, for example. And I'm like, 88, that's weird. Like I never think of something like that. Maybe it was something, mm-hmm. maybe it was a dream that I had that might have in- influenced me to make me think of 88. Oh, mm-hmm. all right. Well, that's that's a weird thing. But then, you know, I go down the road, I see a bunch of 88s on license plates, 888s. I see a bunch of 888 on billboard. And it's like, all right. So now all the things that I was never aware of and never paying attention to is now jumping out at me and screaming for me to look at it. I don't know, dude, this fucking, just this reality is just a trip. It really mm-hmm. just is a trip. And you know, one, one other thing that I did want to add to, as far as like how you were talking about how, you know, like on the, uh, like on the deathbed or, you know, they'll put you on a scale and then whenever your soul leaves mm-hmm. your body, you weigh a little bit less. I think that like, all right. So they say that the, the spirit is basically the breath, right? Like that's what we are. Like that's what the spirit is. They just describe it as the breath. Mm-hmm. Well, Yep. I mean, the wind, like air doesn't weigh anything, but then you add wind to it and it's like a force, you know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. it's, you're taking something that weighs nothing and you're turning it into something that is super fucking strong, especially in like a tornado or hurricane, maybe just high force winds doesn't matter. And maybe just that's all the soul is whenever it's leaving the body it's that it's that breath or that wind or that those mm-hmm. gust that whatever our consciousness or soul or spirit or whatever is that's the part that's leaving the body so maybe mm-hmm. maybe that's why you know maybe that's why it's it's it could just be air whenever it's inside of us but whenever it's gone it's like well there goes the wind oh yeah dude yeah. oh yeah I volunteered, man. Whenever uh, it's time for me to go, man, you got my permission to just set up cameras, all different kind of light spectrum gathering cameras and just see what happens. You know what I mean? See if you can see something float out of my body or something like that. That'd be pretty cool. Dude. Yeah. This shit is so crazy. It's just, it's just <laughs> so crazy. And I'm so happy that we do like multiple episodes a week so that we can just always stay like in this mindset at least mm-hmm. three or four times a week. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's important. I, that's why I think it's so important also to meditate regularly too. Yeah. Because yes. like the the realizations that you get during meditation, it's a completely different change from this mm-hmm. world. And I think the more you meditate, the more you get into that vibration, the more common things start to synchronize and stuff. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know. And, Is there anything going on when you guys go to sleep? Like, are you guys experiencing any any weird stuff like right before falling asleep at all? Like 
flashes or just weird things happening? I just get like the downloads, like the like I like and I just get an idea. Or something yeah, like, like just a weird idea from seemingly out of nowhere. Like maybe mm-hmm. it's just because my brain is finally just shut the fuck up for a couple of minutes and I'm trying right. to go to sleep. And now, now like maybe the doors of the heavens of my mind are open for a message to come in. Right. That's right. usually whenever it happens to me. Mm. I did take a nap today and um, I was like laying down for probably, I don't know, like 45 minutes. And I totally was asleep and awake at the same time through the whole thing. Really? Like I, I never fell asleep. But I was asleep. Wow. Were you what aware is, of your dreaming or did you dream? I wasn't dreaming. I was just laying in bed. Like it was like, it was like I, I, but not like a sleep paralysis or anything. No, like that. no. Like vibrationally, like I, I think my body would have, you know, like if they were measuring my brain waves, I would have mm-hmm. been like shown that I was asleep, but right. I was like, aware of every Mm -hmm. of of everything i could hear like my kid downstairs and i could hear everything going on but i was asleep but you were resting yeah Yeah. i've had a a feeling or uh, an experience rather similar to that as far as i wasn't dreaming but i felt like i was just super i was super consciously aware yet i still feel as though i was in the realm or the the place that dreams happen and that's Mm -hmm. the only way i can explain that it's such a weird feeling but being consciously aware, but yet you know you're asleep at the same time. It's I wonder if thing. it's kind of like a a consciousness astral projection type thing. Oh, I, I yeah, I think something weird's happening with that. Like when I go to sleep, I I start to see weird things, and like there's like a weird flash that happens, and like almost like horizontal lines that cross my my field of vision for like a split second, and I'm like, what is and like almost like a digital type of thing happening? It's super strange, and it and it happens quite frequently. So. Either I'm losing it or some cool shit's happening. And it's always white? Like, it's always like a white light? No. Like, just the other night, I felt like it was like a like a green color that kind of just like, like real quick. Be, and I was like, whoa. And I heard chakras. it matched the, the like the, because my ears are ringing all the time, you know. But yes. at that very moment, I swear the, the pitch in my ear matched what I was seeing too at the same time. It was really mm-hmm. strange. And it's not like when you are just about to fall asleep and you're like, oh, and you shake yourself. It wasn't that. It was, I was, I never opened my eyes. No, I have tons of people who, when we meditate, um, see like colors like, mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you get good at that and you can kind of sense into aura and mm-hmm. the frequency of the aura, mm-hmm. um, like there's times when I close my eyes and I see like just all green because I'm I'm sensing into my heart chakra at that mm-hmm. moment. Um, yeah, there's definitely yeah. something to it for sure. It's not something yeah. I'm making up. It's not something I'm forcing to happen. Mm-hmm. It's sometimes it scares me when it happens. I'm like, whoa, what was that all about? You know, and and so I just I know that it's something. Whether it's because we're meditating so often now, and you know, uh, just being more aware of everything and going to sleep isn't even the same anymore. So there's definitely something something happening within my consciousness at least you know and 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 i tend to think that i'm i'm probably on track of either astral projecting or 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 remote viewing or you know what i mean having some sort of out of body mm-hmm. type thing like i i don't know i just have a feeling that that's that's coming yeah i also think like as the transition happens for everyone and um like the veil thins as we say um mm-hmm. that gifts natural gifts are going to become more prevalent. And I do feel like you have a natural gift for actually um, seeing spirits and things. Mm. Yeah. that, And I'm a really visual person anyways. Mm-hmm. And so I, I can visualize things. And when I think about what to draw or what to paint mm-hmm. or whatever it is, I can already kind of see what I'm going to do before mm-hmm. I do it. And so yeah, really I'm just tracing at that point. Mm-hmm. Well, we don't need to see it mind. like with our eyes. You need to right. see it with your third eye. So your eyes are mm-hmm. closed, but it would make sense. Like maybe you're seeing like, sh- you know, energies mm-hmm. in right. the Right. And, and that's why I wanted to ask you about the whole force field thing in our aura and how, how, mm-hmm. how much that expands out. Is my consciousness just kind of taking a little ride and, and, and getting a vantage point of, of a higher, a, a higher point of view and, because that's what it feels like. It doesn't feel as though I'm leaving my body. It only feels like I'm just kind of seeing something that that I shouldn't be able to see. Mm-hmm. You know? Have so. you asked your highest self what is going on? Oh, no, I haven't. People need to I talk to their haven't. highest selves more often. Mm-hmm. Or your highest yeah. self is going to get pissed. Oh, they get very bitter. 
<laughs> well, I, and I don't, I don't have a dream journal either. That's one yeah. thing I keep telling myself I'm going to do and keep track of the, the experiences I'm having. And if I had to write down every synchronicity, I could have a book for that even just to, you know, or just record them and have them so that I can look at it and have something tangible. And I feel like that would accelerate, you know, maybe my, you know, where I'm going. Okay. I bet with who, whatever I, that I is, wherever I, that is. If tonight, like, when you go, you know, like brush your teeth or whatever, say out loud, like to your highest self and your guides or whatever, be like, when I lay down, um, can you start to give me some clarity on mm -hmm. what I am like seeing? I guarantee you, you'll just have a knowing and like, it'll just like, hit, like you'll, in your head, you're going to go like aura colors or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll just know. Right. That's what yep. they, they'd love that. Just ask them. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I'll definitely get on that. Mm hmm. Yeah, you just gotta just gotta get weird and start trying shit, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> grab the wheel. You know what mm -hmm. I mean. I have. Um, I was just thinking about this, and uh, so I've been thinking that you know, Sean and I, we hope to eventually like uh, embody this level of awareness and consciousness, and maybe like I think that the coolest title that you could ever have, in in my opinion, is like a sage. Right. Like, I mm -hmm. think that that's just the most wisest thing. And, you know, it's funny, even before I ever got into all this like weird spiritual kind of stuff, I I knew that I always wanted to be like even as a young kid, like they would like people would always ask me, like, what do I want to be? And maybe my first answer was always like, I want to I want to play in the NFL. But that didn't mm -hmm. happen. But anyway, um, but I always knew that as an old man, I just wanted to be that really wise old man that somebody can everybody can come to. And I would always have some very meaningful information that they could take with them. Right. Right. And so I started thinking like, all right, if sage is a title and Christ is a title and uh, the Buddha, I think the Buddha is a title, isn't it? Like that wasn't his real name. I, I think you're right. I think it was some, like there's some weird kind of shit. Anyway, maybe it is his real name. Maybe it's not. I'm not sure. But um, I don't think so. I, I'm not sure. But uh, but it made me think like what happens whenever you start to take on uh, a, an alternate kind of persona? Like how could that possibly help you? And so it made me think about like certain actors. You know, there's certain actors out there that like we know them as a certain specific name, but their real names are not that. Like, right. um, for example, so, um, Marilyn Monroe, her real name is not Marilyn Monroe. Her right. real name is Norma Jean. Mm -hmm. No, I never would have thought that. Like, right. um, how about Whoopi Goldberg? Not her real name. Her real name is Karen Johnson. She honestly kind of acts like a Karen, to be honest with you. But, yeah, I um, probably should have kept that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Billie Eilish, everybody has an opinion on Billie Eilish. Her real name is Pirate O'Connell, right? Pirate? Pirate is her real name. That's so mean. I would have kept <laughs> For that. For her parents. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Pirate, that's... I mean, uh, Pi some... is kind of a cute nickname, I guess. Basically, like, the point is, is that the, mm -hmm. all these people that whenever they got famous, they took on these different personalities, these different personas. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it's not Pirate that's singing this music. It's Billy fucking Eilish. You know what I'm saying? And I mm -hmm. wonder if we start taking on certain titles or maybe change the name of whatever vibrates with you more or something like that, even if it's just like whenever you're meditating or whenever you're doing like any kind of divination or whatever, mm -hmm. like imagine the difference between, all right, well, Jonathan is about to do this tarot reading or is it the sage that's about to do this tarot reading kind of right. kind of situation? And it makes you wonder, like, all right, well, maybe that sage has a different vibration and would receive a different kind of message in a – maybe it mixes with me in a certain situation. I don't know. I'm just – I like getting into, like, that kind of, like, mm -hmm. alt alternate kind of thinking, a lot like how um, Nigel has come on and he's talked – was it Nigel? Oh, yeah. we got to get Nigel back on pretty soon, I think. Right, but uh, this guy, Nigel Perriman, he's wrote um, a book or two, I think. Um, mm -hmm. But he basically talks about, like, this whole roundtable kind of situation that you can develop this roundtable within your mind of mm -hmm. just all the different characters who you would love to get advice from. 
And so he started naming all these characters. And anytime he goes into a deep meditation or he has any kind of like strenuous thought that Nigel himself cannot come to the conclusion to, he goes straight to his round table and bang, maybe there's, you know, uh, Robert De Niro or some shit with a message for him. And it's right. like, it's very interesting. And so I don't know. I'm just well, you're, thinking you're, out loud. You're, you're, you're removing that version of yourself that can't come up with the answer. So you remove yourself from that equation entirely, kind of like how you were using the number generator to, to pick the tarot card. You're removing Jonathan from the situation and you're letting your higher self or, 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 or that other character, that fictional character or the real person come up with the answer for you. And then you, you analyze the answer and you go, yeah, that sounds pretty good. You know, and yes. now you can bring Jonathan back. I teach this. So yes, the like I the round table thing's interesting. Um so I think that we have to for our brains to form like energy connections to things similar to like magic when you have to have like a candle to, you know. So mm -hmm. I think for our brains we have to have some sort of representation mm -hmm. in our Symbols. minds. So I always say, you know, so when you want to start working with your highest self, you must figure out what they look like. And it, you know, so you can do a meditation to meet them and see what happens, or you can just decide like, you know, like my um, highest self is like some goddess, like amazing, like badass bitch or something, you know, and I have every detail, like I know exactly what my highest self looks like. I also know like my three guides, you know, I have put, um, even though I know they're like sexless, um, I two have a masculine energy, one has a feminine energy, like, so I have put um, faces and um, bodies to them exactly what they look like. And 100%, I think that, and also I always say, um, you need to also be aware of where the energy that you're communicating is. So it's like you're creating channels. So like for me, my highest self is always up to my right. My guides are always up to my left. If I am doing a reading for somebody and occasionally like a deceased loved one comes through. They always come like level to me towards me um, on the same playing field. Um, angels usually come from behind like a big, like with their wings, like when mm -hmm. I can feel angel energy. So if I want to call upon angels, then I kind of have like a physical idea of what that feels like and a representation mm -hmm. of that energy. When I want to work with my highest self, I always like look up to the right because that's where she sits and that's where she is. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that is so important. So yes, you have to put like, I like the, the round table idea, like that's cool. So however, like, you know, whatever resonates with you, like if it, you want it to be famous people, if you want it to be. Mm -hmm animals you know um whatever it's just like putting something to our brain and and it's putting like that ritual that practice mm -hmm. in that strengthens our abilities and strengthens that connection you know oh, like yeah. i have i have zero doubt about exactly what i am doing every time i talk to my highest self and that's why mm -hmm. i like it's so strong like i can just like download immediately because oh, yeah. i have just put that into place well, your, your higher self isn't worried about the bullshit that, yeah. that Tiffany's worried about. And mm -hmm. so you have somewhat of a, a, a subjective or objective uh, point of view on any yeah. given situation. Yeah. I have a feeling my, my higher self has a six pack. I'm just saying, I'm just going <laughs> to throw that out there, you know. So Why not? Why I mean, not? I was I thinking, wait, look, so look I think like, a, a, like a Norse god, maybe, oh, like, yeah. you know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I was thinking, um, well, I don't know, whenever I try and picture what my higher self would look like, because I never really thought about that. What would, you know, he look like or I, what would I look like at the highest possible self, I guess. Mm -hmm. And dude, I don't know. I, I just immediately started thinking about like Hermes Trismegistus for some reason. <laughs> and then Why I just, not? I just looked up like pictures of him. I'm like, Hold up, dude. Like, it's it's pretty strange. Let me, uh, I'm going to actually, like, share the screen so that y'all can see because it's it's pretty trippy because um, this may have, in a weird way, so where was the picture I was looking at? Um, uh, basically, like, maybe this right here, right? And it's just, like, this old-ass man with this super long beard. He Maybe, maybe he has long hair, maybe he doesn't. And, you know, he wears that hat kind of shrouding you know, his long hair, but I mean, yeah, I guess he does. You see the long hair kind of poking out right here, but 
Mm-hmm. I just picture like that old wise man, and maybe that's Hermes, maybe that's Odin, maybe that's maybe that's just me that's trying trying to emulate their energy or some kind mm-hmm. of thing. But like, oh, I don't yeah. know, dude. You could even imagine that that higher higher self, that higher version of you, has already been through what you're trying to do right now, and so it, oh, like, yeah. imagine that that higher self is is. He already has all the the blueprints and what you have decided to get you to that higher self. And then you get information from that. Then you take all doubts out. He's seen yeah. some shit, you know, he's going oh, through yeah, it all. Through that's it. why, oh, yeah. that's why like whenever you go to him, it, like he just has the answers, like obviously, because yeah. this is like, you're, you're the rookie in this situation. Mm-hmm. He's like the seasoned vet. Mm-hmm. Right, right. And then, and then you like, I think that, that comes with um, also like the confidence because um, then you start to get more and more confident about the information that you receive Mm -hmm. so that, you know, because when people like question all of that, then Mm -hmm. it, you know, it's that, that ability isn't going to get stronger. So Mm -hmm. also you need to um, kind of like, I like to do a meditation and, and announce that I am opening up that channel and I'm keeping it open. And Mm -hmm. that, that channel of light between me and my guides or me and my highest self that it is protected and that only light and love can come through it so that you're just Mm -hmm. like like the more you like set these like boundaries so that it's Mm -hmm. like this funnel of information so i know like i can trust every single thing that comes in it's not going to be like you know and and that's why like when people say you know oh how do you know you're not talking to like a demon or something um, well, because I've put parameters in place and I have faith in the fact that if I state that only things of love and light, you know, then mm-hmm. that's what's coming through. Right. I think you would have to choose that situation for it to actually happen. Mm-hmm. You know, I think we are in that much control of, of our reality, you know, and, and to be honest, I think we all and we've said it before on the show. I, we all know what we got to do. We all know what the what the more correct way about going, you know, and doing something is. And so then you ask your higher self and they tell you that thing that you already kind of knew. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. You guys almost, need to start uh, working with your higher selves. I think so. The thing is, is, is it, we go right back to that. Like I question myself, but now that I'm starting to understand it a little bit more, how it works and, and that now I don't need to, to question myself when it comes to getting a message, especially if it's a good message. Like, yes. why do you question and, well, yourself at that point? At first, just journal it all, write mm-hmm. it all down, you know, cause then you're not you don't have, and then you'll notice synchronicities and that also builds up your confidence when you Mm -hmm. start to see things like that. Yeah. I think we all need to be writing things down, to be honest. I did this one day and I should do it more, you know, and I know this, but one day I, I I wrote like, I don't know, it was a shit ton. It was almost like automatic writing. It was like, I was just getting Mm -hmm. my mind onto, and I was using my phone. So I was typing it and it was almost like I couldn't type fast enough because my thoughts were just flowing out. And then after that, I could read it. And so then I read it and all of a sudden I'm figuring out things about myself way That's type of channeling. better, That's channeling. way better. Yeah. Way better than I ever would have. <laughs> yeah. And to the point where I was kind of embarrassed to not even see it before or really mm-hmm. fully, maybe I saw it, but it was out of my, maybe it was just in the peripheral, you know what I mean? And so mm-hmm. it wasn't like, you know, it was on the side burner. I wasn't really worried about it, but I think writing shit down, getting what's on your mind onto paper, making it tangible, looking at it, it's in the physical now you can figure shit out. Mm-hmm. It's tarot time, baby. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. We got the King of Cups this time. Mm-hmm. Which All right. I don't think we've ever gotten the King of Cups. That doesn't uh, sound... I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Well, as you guys were talking, I was holding the crystal in my hand, and I held the, the cards in my hand, and I was just asking for a flowful type message that would, you know, kind of uh, vibrate with all of us and then all of the ones. So this is what we're getting. All right. Let's do it. The King of Cups, masculine energy of taking action from a place of compassion and love are upheld within the King of Cups. In tarot, kings are the masters of their suit, representing stability, authority, and healthy masculine energy. The King of Cups represents the elements of fire and water, which exist in harmony without overpowering one another. The king is seated on a concrete throne that appears stable despite floating in water. The ship in the background symbolizes taking action for himself, but also on behalf of the many passengers abroad. He is able to navigate emotional depths without allowing the waves to drag him downward. Many many people rely on the king, and he is loving, empathetic, and intuitive in response to their needs. 
Okay. Love it, dude. Like, were we not just talking it, about the waves said, and shit, right? The, yes, like, like him also like focused on him, but then focused on you know like us saying like manifesting for the collective, and mm-hmm. so him focused on like also the people, mm-hmm. and then the waves. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. Yeah, I, that's that's awesome to that even brought that up. I wasn't even thinking that. I was just and the thinking whole about thing was about balance too. The yin, mm. the yin and the yang, uh, oh, yeah. the yin and the yang. Fire in the water. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Well, and Sean, mm-hmm. you know, going into that meditation, seeing the waves coming out into his living room, they're watching the Olympics, the surfing or mm-hmm. whatever. And, mm-hmm. and, oh my God. And she dude, was watching sink- it for a while. Like I said, how long were you watching this? She's like, oh, at least 30 minutes. And so while we were doing that, she was in fact watching the ocean. And so there's definitely something happening <laughs> or you can call it a coincidence. It's up to you guys, you know? I mean, I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't. I mean, how many coincidences does it take for it to be mathematically impossible? Exactly. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, we're beyond that. Yeah. Um, the spiritual message behind it, it says you are working on creating or maintaining strong boundaries in your relationships. Allow yourself to rely on the presence of support and emotional stability through tough times. It may also mean that you are in a position to support others and provide guidance. Others may look to you for leadership in a creative project. Mm. very cool i dig it i dig it so you have emotional stability and empathy is the key meanings Mm -hmm. of that card perfect i love it bottom line too is we just need to start trusting ourselves a little bit better you know Mm -hmm. quit doubting ourselves we know what we really want we know what we have to do even though it might be uncomfortable at first just fucking start doing it because that's Mm -hmm. what we need I love it. I mean, I know that there's absolutely trials and tribulations through all in, in choppy waters, you know, mm-hmm. in this pirate ship of fucking weirdness. But like, <laughs> like I, I do, I do love the challenge, even though in the moment I don't love the challenge, but overall, like big picture kind of thing. Like I just start to become like pretty thankful that I'm challenged on certain things. If it is coming from God or the universe or, mm-hmm. you know, the makers of the matrix itself, like mm-hmm. it's, it's for it's for the betterment of us in a weird mm-hmm. way. Like all the bills you got to pay, all the responsibilities that you have, all the relationships that you need to maintain, like all the mm-hmm. work that you got to do, the lack of sleep, the dealing with the kids and all this and all that. It's like, it is kind of a drag sometimes, but like, God damn, if it's not chiseling us out to just be like the most oh, yeah. gangster looking statue of all time. Oh, yeah. most definitely with the six pack. Don't forget yes. you know? with the stick and the little wiener. You got to have the little wiener on it too, oh, because yeah. it's it's those are the smart ones. Those are the know. smart ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, unfortunately, class. but yeah, my you know, high self definitely has a little wiener. <laughs> it's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice, but you know. <laughs> um. Anyhow, look, Tiffany, we love you, and uh, if anybody doesn't know already who you are or where they can find you, the name of your podcast, all of your socials, where can they find all that? Rooted frequency. Um, is the name of my podcast. It's on um, Spotify and YouTube. And then also I just started a Google calendar where people can book um, free 15 minute appointments with me. And I'm like putting little ones scattered throughout the month. If you need like a little bit of clarification or direction, um, that's like my giving back to the collective. Um, So I'll give you guys that link to put down there. And then um, also my subscription boxes in case anybody wants crystals delivered that to them because my, like my boxes are so freaking adorable now. I changed the whole thing. Oh, that's awesome. I'm going to have to get me one for sure. I'll send you guys a box. Oh, that'd be great. That would be sweet. (laughs) Yes. I love your, like the box that you sent me and Jacob. Mm -hmm. I still have all the crystals right here on my desk. Um, like, yeah, no, these are really cute. Like I have a, a different intention with every box mm-hmm. so that all the crystals go with the intention. And then you get like a little card with, um, what to do with them. And yeah, Sweet. it's really nice. I, I still Love got, it. I always look journey. at this. I always look at this little elephant here. Oh yeah. He's so cute. He is just the cutest little crystal ever mm-hmm. made. Um, yeah. I always sit here with my big citrine. Oh, damn. That's a yeah. nice one. Isn't that pretty? What does citrine do? What's what does it represent? Uh, success. I like it. I like it. I got it. my little. I got my little pieces that Isaac made made for me right here. Oh, nice. Every day. Er- You're organi- yeah. Organite. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, look, Tiffany, we loved having you on, and um, the for the one who wants to be able to stick around for the meditation, I'm sure it's going to be some e- extra weird kind of shit that's going to be going on with that but if you don't want to stick around then this is where we leave you and what we like to say is 
Tiffany came here and she taught you anything, it's that you don't know what you don't know. So don't just get weird. Stay weird. This is by uh, the, the YouTube channel called Mary Kate. And the name of the actual meditation, it says guided visualization meditation. Do this before manifesting. Supposedly it works instantly from the title. We're going to uh, close our eyes and connect to the ethereal world, be that energy that is in the bubble and not only of this body. So we're going to get all the way weird here in just three, two, one. Let go. This meditation is designed to accelerate your manifesting. And for optimum results, listen to this daily until you feel and believe that your desire is yours. Find a comfortable seated position and begin this meditation by setting the intention for one thing that you intend to manifest. This meditation uses powerful methods to accelerate your manifestation. So be sure to focus on just this one intention during this practice. And when you're ready, close your eyes allowing your arms to be relaxed at your sides with your palms facing up. Taking a deep breath in. And exhale, quieting your mind and becoming fully present in this moment. Deep breath in and exhale, quieting your thoughts, feeling the sensations going on in your body, feeling the texture of the surface beneath you, listening and aware of the sounds and noises around you. Taking in this moment of being awake, alive, in tune, connected, and open to what's next. And in this moment, of heightened awareness, I want you to imagine that this thing that you desire and are choosing to manifest is not only possible, but it's inevitable. It's obvious. It already exists and you merely need to decide to have it. Take another deep breath in and exhale and repeat after me. I am open and ready to receive this in the easiest and best possible way. because I know that it will happen. Of course I can have this. My success is inevitable. fully supported in all of my desires. I surrender and allow this to be worked out for me.
it's here and it's mine. Take a deep breath in. And exhale. And I want you to imagine yourself sitting in the midst of the universe. Floating in vast open space. with stars surrounding you and magic within you. In this universe full of endless possibilities, you can create and call in anything you desire. And when you do, it can happen immediately. It can happen right here, right now in this moment. And as you focus your intention and feelings on this desire that you want, I want you to feel yourself picking up speed, moving quickly through space and time. Stars and planets passing you by as you rapidly approach this desire. Feeling a sense of excitement, anticipation, and satisfaction that you are rapidly approaching this desire with such speed and precision. And as you get closer to this desire that you want, you notice a beautiful golden circle of light surrounding it. And as you feel yourself move through this circle, this desire is suddenly yours. It's here right now. You did it. Allow yourself to explore the feelings of having exactly what you want. You can visualize it. You can simply just enjoy this moment. Just allow yourself to fully commit to this experience of your desire being here right now. Take a deep breath in and exhale, allowing this experience to stay with you, knowing that this thing that you intend to manifest is now a part of you. You've already experienced it. And it has no choice but to show up in your reality. And take a moment to really feel whatever feeling this thing would provide for you. Maybe it feels like a huge relief. Maybe it feels like total freedom. Or maybe you simply feel grateful and fulfilled. Just sit in this feeling for a few moments, not forcing or pushing, just being, just allowing this high vibrational energy to activate within you. I want you to repeat after me. 
it's here and it's mine. It's here and it's mine. It's here and it's mine. I believe it and will receive it. I believe it and will receive it. I believe it and will receive it. Take a deep breath in and exhale. And when you're ready, begin to come back to this moment, gently wiggling your fingers and toes and maybe stretching in a way that feels good to you. Allowing that deep faith and trust that this desire will show up no matter what. And knowing that the when and how aren't up to you. And that you can simply just live in the knowing that it's yours. And that it will show up at any time. Okay. That was an interesting one. What do y'all think? I like it. I felt like uh, with the the feeling that I was able to get into and just the, the fact that I told myself that it was a guarantee that it was going to work. I think there's so much more to that and people don't understand. You know, mm-hmm. there's a lot of I know I bring other people into this. OK. All right. But we're talking to people here, you know. But um, for me personally, I will say that I felt like it was going to work, you know. And I asked for to manifest the the abilities that I'm not even aware of yet, but my natural Mm -hmm. abilities, I want those to start getting stronger. So, and for whatever, however, that's going to benefit me or even people around me. I was just working on like some kind of personal stuff going on in my mind. And I'm like, all right, well, I want to be able to take control of this situation. I want to have, I want to like stop feeling like I need to do this kind of stuff that I, doesn't mm-hmm. suit me whatsoever, right? And, mm-hmm. dude, I just felt like, you know, I just got, uh, like, utmost clarity, like, on how can I prevent myself from wanting to do a certain thing? Um, and it was, like, so easy. Like, it just came through, like, so easy. The answer is just mm-hmm. so simple. And that's that's why I think meditation is so powerful because, we overreact and that emotion gets attached to uh, all of it and maybe the fear or the judgment of yourself. But it's like whenever you turn all that crap off, it's like, you know, the the medicine is like right there. Mm. Yeah, I was um, focused on my next step in my business. And I was um, I love meditations when um, it has you like picture yourself as if you're already there. You know, Mm -hmm. and I was able to, you know, when I would, the smells and the feels and the textures and the sounds and, um, when she said, um, it's already yours, like imagine it's already yours. So I like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. You say that too, because I felt like, so whenever I was envisioning a future, cause I was kind of working on a couple of things, but there was one like main one that I was really, you know, focused on. And Mm -hmm. whenever it was talking about like uh, envisioning it as if you already have it, I came from the perspective of like, I'm an old man. I already accomplished this. And now I'm looking back at a picture that I had Mm -hmm. and it's a picture that hasn't even happened yet. But coming from the perspective of the old man, that's old news, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. I think it's, it's important that we figure out our own way, you know, and for for you, that was the way to go, you know, and, and really Mm -hmm. trying to feel that emotion or see the image, like we're all going to have our own way that works for us. And I think Mm -hmm. that's what we have to focus on, you know, maybe not worry about what everybody else is doing or, or whether it's someone's channeling a a being or whether somebody, everyone's got their own thing that they're doing and it's working for them. And Mm so, I mean, unless it's not working, then change something up. Like these shows are and I mean, Sean, me and you, we, we talk about it all the time. Like this, 
this is so meaningful to us. Like all mm-hmm. the stuff that we discover and, you know, whether it be in books or on articles or just like the, the you know, behind like hidden doors within our own mind, like that, that kind mm-hmm. of stuff that we can just go on and discover and have like those epiphany moments of like, mm-hmm. oh my God, that's the key that opens that door. And I had it in me all along and turns mm-hmm. out, you know, like that's, that's like the most meaningful thing that you can do in, in like, you know, the podcast world, I think like, like mm-hmm. the stuff that we talk about, like, I just think that it's so important. Well, well I think it's it, like, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, it's like a real blessing to be able to, you know, have this stuff around you often, you know, throughout the week, because I, that's a lot of things. Like when people come into my center, you know, they're like, well, I feel great when I'm here and then I go home to everything. So, you know, and you guys are recording and talking about stuff every single day. So, mm-hmm. um, like same thing, like just to immerse ourselves in this, it's a blessing. Anyway. Yeah. I guess we'll just wrap it up right here. Tiffany, this was awesome. And, uh, Sean, I mean, dude, I, I mean, love this, this stuff. Great dude. episode, man. And this, this was, this was just too good. It's always fun when Tiffany comes through, you know what I mean? We always have yeah. these open-minded Immersion. conversations. Yes. We're not afraid Definitely. to say something stupid, you know what I mean? Which I, know, I'm pro- just... I probably do often, but <laughs> No, you never do. You know, just three projectors, three diamonds. That's it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, dude. All right, guys. Well, we'll see y'all on the flip side. Bye, guys. Thank you.